open the doors. Good morning, first of all. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Am I muted? Yes, no? No, I'm good. All right, okay. All right. Good morning. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, we do have the mic on, but uh, there's no speaker out here. Um, if you do not have a branch in your hands, uh, there are some left on, over here. Um, willow branches instead of palm branches. You might wonder what gives. It's called Palm Sunday, isn't it? Uh, well, in uh, places like Ukraine, it's called Willow Sunday because that's what they use to celebrate the day Jesus entered Jerusalem to the shouts of the crowds Hosanna in the highest. Uh, in fact, only one of the Gospels mentions palms, uh, and the others just say leafy branches. Well, ours aren't quite leafy yet, but these were cut in uh, our property here and in other yards uh, of people from our church to signify, um, well, what are we signifying this day? Is it celebration? Or is it anticipation of celebration, or is it just ambiguous? And I'd like to say this is the most ambiguous day of worship for the Christian church because we are celebrating the entry of Jesus into the final days of his life on earth and the confrontation with the forces of destruction in Jerusalem. And so, as we sing and as we pray and as we shout Hosanna, let us remember that this worship service prepares us for Good Friday and prepares Jesus for his work of crucifixion, death, and burial, even as we already anticipate Easter. So, let this be a uh, a preparation for us as we enter into the sanctuary with song and shouts of Hosanna that uh, this time of worship is, well, it's marked with joy and grief. And I want to say a big thank you before we begin to our choir, our musicians, our director, Pat, and all those who decorate it, and who um, the artists among us, and the various other people who did um, tremendous work to prepare us for this time of worship together. Let us raise our voices in praise of the God who has shared these gifts with us. I'm going to start by reading the gospel according to Mark. The story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, Mark chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this, tell them, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, 
What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to shout with me in response as printed in your bulletin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature 
and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Invite us to turn to those around us with words of peace, gestures of peace. Peace be with you. And now I think it's time for our kids to come and join me for a moment. And yeah, come up on, and join me on the steps. Are you going to come, Higla? Hey? Oh, you're interested in something else right now. OK. Oh, look at that. Hey, uh, everybody got a willow branch? Did you get one? Oh, you've got one from your mom. Okay, there you go. Yes. Simon, do you need one? Here. No, you don't need one, but your dad needs one. There you go. And uh, why do you think we're using willow branches? Why do you think we're using these branches today? Because we don't have palm trees. We don't live in Mexico <laughs> or in Florida. Yeah. Why would we use anything else, right? Yeah, we use these. Right? Yeah, we use these because... My grandma goes to Florida every cold day. Oh, yeah. Some grandmas go to Florida when it's cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rest of us are stuck here. And, but, you know, the wonderful thing is about living here that we get to experience this miracle every year that something new grows out of just some old dead branches. And we get to see that even when it's still cold and the snow still covers the ground and the wind blows, there's stuff growing in our gardens, right? Did you find any in your gardens yet? Any pussy willows? No? Yeah? Maybe you have to look. Oh, you have one in your house that's growing. Okay. Well, here on the church property, there's quite a few. Outside when it's snow. Pardon? Yeah, you have a garden outside when it's... Mm -hmm. So th this, is, this is a reminder of how, uh, how good God is. You know, God is the God of all the people in the world and of all creatures, plants and animals included, and mountains and w oceans and rivers. And God makes new things happen all the time, even though sometimes... We have to wait for a long time. Sometimes the winter is longer than other times. And sometimes we want to be in Florida for three or four months a year, but we can't. We're stuck here. But then we think about how God will make new things grow, and we can, we can already feel summer coming, right? We can already find that now is the time of change. Things are coming alive. And, you know, that reminds me that uh, next Sunday is uh, a very, very special Sunday, too. Today is called what? Today's Sunday is Palm Sunday or Willow Sunday, but next Sunday is what? What do we celebrate? Easter, yeah. And Easter is... Tekla's favorite holiday, I know that, um, for a very obvious reason. Um, but there's, besides chocolate, there's also the resurrection 
That's right. We celebrate Jesus' resurrection next Sunday. And so in a way, we're kind of already getting ready for that today with these willow branches, right? Because something is already coming out. Not quite green yet, but it will come. What were you going to say? <laughs> Between now and Easter is Good Friday. You are right. And Good Friday is perhaps the hardest day for anyone to remember. Because even though we call it good, something happened that maybe wasn't that good for Jesus. The crucifixion, exactly. So we're going to go through this week remembering that Jesus, um, before, he, before he came to life, had to die. Before Jesus rose from the grave, he had to be buried in a grave. And before new things can grow on a, on a willow branch, winter has to come and that tree has to die. And only then can new things grow. So that's what we celebrate this whole week. We celebrate that Jesus comes to give his life, to die, to be buried in order to rise again. And you know, that gives me hope. That gives me strength, that gives me love in my heart, even when winter is long and things are white or gray and not green and my relatives or friends are in a warm place somewhere else and maybe they don't even know what it's like over here. But that's okay because we are here celebrating and anticipating new life. Let's give... And, and today we're going to hear that story of the whole week from Palm Sunday, Willow Sunday, to Easter, including Monday, Thursday, when Jesus had the Last Supper, and Good Friday when he was crucified, and Saturday when he was in the grave. We're going to hear that whole story sung to us and told to us in a very special cantata. Let's pray, shall we? Let's fold our hands. Dear Jesus, we give you thanks that you are here to teach us once again what it takes to come alive. We thank you that you go with us and ahead of us through this week, through suffering, through loss, through goodbyes, and even through death, and you come out to a new and glorious morning. Teach us to walk with you, follow you, and love you to the end and to the new beginning that you promise us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I invite us to stand as we're able for our hymn of the day.
We give thanks with and for the offerings that we share at the back, uh, on the stand by the door, or online, or in whatever form we choose. And we give thanks with the offertory prayer printed on page 6. I invite you to pray with me. Generous God, you feed us with the harvest of the land, and you provide for every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them into a feast that welcomes all. In Jesus Christ, our host and our guest, amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God, for the whole world, and for all of creation saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. Hear us, O God. Jesus, humble King, this day the church celebrates your entry into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. This is an ambiguous victory parade or funeral procession. As you enter the city that stones the prophets and kills those who are sent to it, your final days on earth will be filled with demonstrations and disputations, accusations and condemnations. You will be marked a loser by the end of this week. Across your throne, thorns your crown, the charge against you a mockery, King of the Jews. We humble ourselves before you, our King. Help us repent of our complicity in systems and events that lead to death. We remember today victims of violence everywhere, in Haiti and Sudan, in Israel and Palestine, in Ukraine and Russia, in intimate partnerships and in schoolyards. Hear us, O God. God of mercy, forgive us for making life difficult for others, blaming victims, neglecting the powerless, trampling the earth, polluting water and poisoning the air. Show us how we can all affect change. Bring our doings at work, at home, on vacation, in school, at the mall, and at the ballot box in line with your gracious will for all creatures. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of peace, we display willow branches and thereby remember the churches of Ukraine and other Orthodox churches. Be with our siblings in faith who use these branches to signify your life-giving passion in a world of aggression. Bring an end to all wars dismantle weapons of mass destruction, call to repentance those who profit from war. Hear us, O God. God of the family, renew the affection in all our relationships, strengthen all marriages and long-term relationships, help those who are estranged find each other again, be with those of us who are exhausted, isolated, or lonely. Hear us, O God. God of health and well-being, touch all bodies and minds that are hurting. Be with the sick, those awaiting test results, recovering from surgery, or waiting for treatment. Strengthen Barbara, Robert, Sharon, Ava, and John, and those we name in this moment. We give you thanks for restored strength and wholeness, and we give thanks especially for the saints in glory, praying today for the grieving family of Helga Madsen. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of music, art, and poetry. We give thanks for choirs and musicians, poets and readers, artists and decorators. Bless this hour of worship, those who give and those who receive their gifts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
all these things and whatever else you see your world needs, we pray for the sake and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
As Jesus approached Jerusalem, he saw the great city and began to weep. This ancient city had known many tears in her long, troubled history. Her stone pathways were consecrated with the blood of martyrs, and her walls echoed the cries of a million prayers for deliverance. Now, as the promised one drew near, the towering gates of the city flew open to receive her king. Crowds began to gather, chanting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Running ahead, the people laid their coats upon the road as a carpet of praise to the deliverer. They took palm branches and waved them in adoration of their conquering king. This was the day they had long awaited, and their celebration could be heard in the temple. Hosanna, they cried. Hosanna to the son of David.
Jesus and his followers lingered in the temple where he continued to teach them a new way. The people treasured every word, but the chief priests, scribes, and elders tried to disrupt his preaching. Look how the whole world seems to be following him, they said. Jesus knew that the hour was near for him to leave the world and return to the Father. He understood that his sacred sojourn to Jerusalem had been a steady, unrelenting procession to the cross. Later, as he gathered with his chosen ones for Passover, Jesus broke bread and blessed it. Take and eat, this is my body. He poured wine into a chalice and gave it to them and said, this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. How could they have known that even in their final hymn of benediction, he was once again teaching them of grace? For saturating every holy word he chanted and lavished upon each solemn note he sang was the bittersweet song of the cross.
Please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. This is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table that has been prepared for the weary. Come to the upper room, as it were. We are going to commune in uh, two rows or two uh, aisles. Please come down the middle for the bread and then pass to the left or right for the wine. The choir will go first. Thank you.
the garden had always been a special place for Jesus. As he walked among the olive trees of Gethsemane, did he think of Eden and the tree that had brought death to his beloved creation? Where are you? He had called to his children in the cool of the day. Now he was calling them again. By his message of grace, he was drawing his creation back to the garden. This time, the tree in the center of it all would not bring death, but life everlasting. The emotion of it overwhelmed him, and he fell to the ground in anguish. Over and over, he cried, Father, let this cup pass from me. Then at once, a deep peace flooded his spirit, and he spoke, Father, let thy will be done. His words resounded through the lonely garden, and for a moment, it seemed the evening breeze stood breathless and still.
He had been a carpenter. Wood and nails had been his trade. Now he gazed upon the wooden cross before him, and for a moment he remembered a gentler time. Then soldiers laid the heavy beams of the cross upon his shoulders, and at the crack of the whip, the condemned carpenter began to walk the winding road up to the place of the skull. With each step he took, the cruel timbers beat out a rhythm of death and despair upon that stony path. The song of the cross began to moan like a dirge as the cries of a violent mob filled the air with the music of grief and sorrow. The carpenter fell beneath the cross.
see from his hands, his head, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown?
The cross of Christ is a pillar of truth to guide me. The cross of Christ is a shield to overshadow me. The cross of Christ is a tower of strength to protect me. The cross of Christ goes before and behind me. The cross of Christ is above and beneath me. The cross of Christ is on my left and on my right. The cross of Christ is within and about me. How wonderful the cross of Christ. It brings life, not death, light, not darkness. It is the wood on which the Lord, like a great warrior, was wounded and died for the sin of the world. A tree had destroyed us. A tree now brings us life. The Christ of the cross is all in all to me.